Welcome to Tech Brothers with Amir. In this video, we are going to learn about get metadata activity in Azure Data Factory. So in my previous videos, you guys have seen multiple places where I have used this activity and in such as we want to get the list of all the files from a folder. So we have used this activity there. So, but in this video, what we are going to do, we are going to drill into each and every aspect of this activity. And there are certain features we miss, miss them in the the previous videos so we are going to go through all those features in this video so you will know in and out of this activity once we are done with the video now let's see the definition you can use this get metadata activity to retrieve the metadata of any data in azure data factory or synapse pipeline so that's the definition so it means that we can if we want to get that get metadata such as let's say may, uh, maybe I want to get the last modified date or I want to see if the file exists or I want to get the list of the files in a folder. So there are tons of scenario or get the list of the columns and all those kind of things that, that can be achievable by using uh, this uh, activity. Now what we are going to do here, you can use the output of this activity in further sub activities uh, such as if you want to use in if condition, you can use it or any other activities. Uh, so depending upon scenario, you will be using the output from the get metadata activity in the other activities in the pipeline now supported the capabilities so get metadata activity takes the data set as the input and return metadata information as the output that's very clear and currently uh, the max size of uh, return the metadata is the 4 MB okay that's pretty big uh, or that's pretty uh, decent size uh, information that is going to return uh, there could be scenarios where uh, this limit does not work for many people uh, but most of the time it will work uh, supported connectors uh, so now there are tons of uh, connectors uh, that it, it does support and microsoft keep adding them uh, so this is the list you can see right there it can get you item list, item type, size, created, last modified, child items. So you can see from which part it does get you all that and from which it does not. So from here we can see that uh, for C created file or folder from Amazon S3, that's not going to be possible if you use the get metadata activity. So, but if you are using, uh, uh, let's see, right here, Azure files, you will be able to get the uh, created uh, file or folder so right there there is a, so you can see right there information is there okay so you can see cross or check mark depending on these connectors there are some limitation you can read through so each time let's say you want to use this one for uh, amazon s3 take a look what capabilities uh, this uh, activity provides uh, and read through it now there are relational databases uh, so you can see for relationals uh, this is uh, what it is going to return structure column count exist so these are this uh, this information can be returned from these uh, uh, relational databases now get metadata options so there are tons of them so here item name get the name of the file or folder item type so it can be file or folder size size of the file in bytes applicable only to the files so it's going to give us the size of the file not the folder created created date time of the file or the folder last modified date of file or a folder so this is going to return child items so it is going to return us a list of subfolders and files in given folder so applicable only to the folders return value in a list of name and type of each item uh, content md5 md5 of a file applicable only to the file so if you want to do some kind of uh, encryption and all those then you can use this uh, so honestly i have not used this one structure data structure of a file or relational database table return values list of columns names and column types so that's what it will return you if you look for structure column count from the name you can tell it will list as the list uh, number of columns in a file or a table exist uh, checks if the file exists or not exist so i have created a video on this one as well and perform how to work it but let's go ahead and take a look on each and every item it can return and enjoy uh, the, the capability of uh, this uh, uh, activity so let's go ahead and uh, uh, perform a few things so i'm gonna go to the azure portal and uh, i'm here in the uh, where am i right here okay so that's my azure portal and uh, i have azure data factory created 
and uh, then uh, I have a storage con uh, created. I'm going to go to storage first and create a couple of containers. Why? So we can uh, check all the different uh, values, but uh, we need to get. Uh, so I'm going to create input folder and container. Sorry, then I'm going to create output uh, container. Now in the input container, I'm going to upload few files so we can uh, test all the feature our get metadata activity provides though. So I'm going to go right here and uh, let's say I will load these many files. So this is upload all. Okay, now we are all good here. Let's go back uh, to the tech browser storage and we have two containers and the input container has the files. Now let's go to the Azure Data Factory and uh, then we create a pipeline. And from there, we are going to see how these uh, features uh, are being used or can be accessed. Um, so let's go to the author. In the author, we are going to go to the pipeline, new pipeline. Uh, here, I'm going to use a get metadata. Okay, so get metadata activity is right there. First of all, nothing to worry about this part. Uh, you're going to go to the data set straight. And now, here you can create this data set for many of the sources. Uh, so here is blob storage, you have data lake 2, you have Amazon S3, you have a SQL Server file system, you know, you have tons of these different data sources for which you can connect. Once you connect, then it's going to give you the information according to that. So let's say Azure blob storage. In this uh, blob storage, we know that uh, we have files and folders and, uh, you know, containers, whatever. So we are going to use, uh, say, a delimited file. It's not really going to matter. I'm not going to point to one file here. Well, let's see. So we are going to go and create a new link service, choose a subscription, and choose uh, your storage. Uh, now let's test this. Uh, it is tested successfully. Now. Here you can provide a container. Let's do input container, okay? And leave this one as it is. Now we don't say it has first row header and all those, uh, you know. Uh, let's go with the first, uh, this part that will come back and, uh, you know, make some changes and test it. Now, right here, as we have selected a container and this is the field part, now you're gonna hit new and it's gonna show you tons of arguments. So, so first of all, See child items. If you are interested to get the list of all items, such as in my case, I want to see how many files are there and if I want to pass through the for each loop and load them or create uh, maybe some, you know, tables depending on those files and all that, I can do that. So see the child items. I just choose the child items and I'm executing a get metadata activity. I learn a lot of uh, techniques uh, or uh, information just by executing the activities and looking at their output. Um, so if you see right there, I didn't just got the get metadata and executed it. Now I can go to the output and here it's uh, returning me. I remember in the, uh, the arguments I selected the child items. In the child item, it is returning me two things. It's returning me the name of the file, it is then the type. So you see right there, there are all these files and then it returned me the file name and type. So this can be further, I believe, if we go back here in the data sets, go open. And now instead of even if I don't say input to container, now we have, let's see if we execute what we get. So this is exactly how I test all those things and learn. Um, I make uh, some experiments and uh, those from those experiments I learn. Uh, click right there and see right there in the child items. Uh, now I have input and it's a folder and output and a folder. So if I just uh, point to the my blob storage, see right there, that's my blob storage. And if I will only point to the blob storage, the child items are going to be my container names. So see input and the output. Uh, but if I will go to further to the input container, then it is going to return me what's inside that input container. So you see that it is telling you name of those containers and then tell, telling you the type of so files, right? So this was one of that. Now what we are going to do, we are going to go back to the child items right here in the argument. So, so we learn if we need to get the list of the folders we can get, if we want to get the list of the files we can get uh, um, by pointing uh, the uh, our data set to the folder and uh, uh, then choose the child items. Now exist. 
Now in the exist, uh, what's going to happen if I debug this one? So this is not really going to be useful here. This is more like when you are going to say like, oh, I want to check if my file does exist. So let's uh, see. It completed successfully and it uh, and didn't really do anything. Our link service does exist, you know, not a big deal. But uh, let's do this. Uh, go to the file level. And now, and here I'm going to go to the browse. And in the browse, I'm going to say input. And input, I'm checking for a file such as customer. Okay. Now, let's uh, see input and customer file. Now, if I debug this uh, get metadata activity, it's going to check if the customer file does exist or does not exist. Okay. So, in this case, it executed. And you can see that exist is equal to true. Okay, so whatever you select in the last uh, uh, part, we were saying child items, so it was showing you child items. Now we selected exist in the argument, and that's what it is showing right here, and then showing the value true or false. In this case, as the file does exist, it is showing us the value true. Now I can further use it in the if condition, and uh, if I want to load the file, I can load or I can send an email, file does not exist, and all that. So I can go back here in the input and I can delete this customer file and let's see what uh, our exist uh, part will return. So remember, uh, exist can return as a true or false. So right there, we can go back here and see exist false. As we have deleted the file, there is no file with the name customer. That's why it is showing us, hey, your file does not exist. Now, what we can do in the argument, so let's go to the third, next one, item name. So if I want to get the item names and all that, uh, that's possible. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to the, I just want to delete this uh, file. And now I'm going to go, just go ahead and execute. And let's see what it returns us. So let's see the output and see here item name is input. That's what the name of our uh, folder is uh, container is uh, if we need to get that we can uh, use that because uh, let's say you are uh, pointing to you are using this link service so you are passing the uh, parameterized uh, database names so every time the link service is uh, changing the database name but you need to use that uh, value further in somewhere so you want to see like hey uh, uh, what is the name of my item so you can always go there and uh, take a look you know this item name is going to return you wherever it is pointing so that's good and let's go to the next one and uh, try item type so in this case uh, it is going to return you a folder you know because we are pointing to the folder and if we will uh, go further back and say like point to the file it will be file so you can uh, you know make use of it let's go right there see this is a folder because we were pointing to the folder how i know that i'm pointing to the folder go to the right there see and if i will do some file here and now let's see if i run it now what's going to happen is it going to tell me hey your item type is a file execute let's check the output and see item type is file okay so not a big deal maybe you i don't know if you will use this one too much or not but uh, no, now as we select the file, some of the values show up because they are not available for the folder. So let's test them out. So in this case, uh, this uh, this got a new one, a column count. Let's take, take a look on that one. So if I debug, it's going to give us the uh, total count of the columns. Okay, so execute. It's still working. Now let's refresh. Got completed. And you can see that it's telling us there are three columns in this uh, file. So now, as we are pointing to the file, we can go further. If we want to get the content in MD5, that we can do it. But uh, that's going to be, I'm not really, I don't know. I have not seen uh, or have not used this one too much. So this is uh, some encryption uh, MD5. Uh, but in my case, I really uh, see right there. That's the total file content coming into the content MD5. So in my, it's a small file, just uh, two columns, three columns are there. Now let's go back and take a look at what other options we have here. We have checked exist, if the file exists or not, if item name, if we're going to get that name of the item. So let's do that too. In the last one, we have done item type, right? So let's do the item name now. See, 
So if you want to get the some file name or item name, what is the link service you are or data set is pointing to, you can get that. Now let's go further and say last modified. So if you want to check uh, when was uh, the last modified date of that file, it's going to get us that. Execute. So this is the date when this uh, was last modified, um, that file. Okay. So now let's go back to another one. Take a look. And here we have size. So this is going to return as the size of the file in the bytes. So let's uh, take a look. 48 bytes, very small file, as I told you guys. Okay, so let's go to check another one. So there is uh, tons of metadata information we can get. Uh, here we are going to get the structure. See, right there. Okay, so that's your first uh, in column and it is string type. The second is also string type and also the third one is also string type. So for this file, if you go back here, let me take you to the back. And uh, this is the file. So it is called customer uh, 821st, right? So we are going to go back to the you know, right here if we check and uh, we can take a look. If uh, you see right there, these are all, uh, see right there, this is a, uh, all uh, kind of uh, string type data. So there is a, you know, it's just like, oh, this is your string, 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 you know. So that that's all it is, right? Even uh, you can see that there are numbers, but they're used as a string here. It's, these files are not really well formatted and all that. So you can uh, see right there, you know. So when in this structure, it uh, show you the column data types and all that. Okay, so now if you have, uh, let me see if I go to the output right there. So it's the first column, uh, it, see the, oh, guess what? We have this uh, POP01, POP02, and POP03 because I even did not go to the, let me see if uh, I can take a look and make it better. So let's go to open. Okay, here, first row has a header. Okay, let's click that because that prop one and two and three that was coming because I did not tell if my file has the header. That's why. So let me debug again and see. Now this time it should get us the, the list of the columns and then type of them. So I don't know if that make a difference once it get the list. See right there, ID, name, and file name. So these are the columns. But the data type is showing it's a string. I don't know how to even confirm that if it is not string and all that maybe if you put double quotes around it or something like that then it will recognize it better but i i don't really want to waste my time here but uh, I, yeah this will give you some kind of data type data the name of columns and data type okay so we have done a lot of experiments with the uh, when we choose the, the file so there are different properties for file there are different properties for the uh, folder so if you will be using some SQL connection then there would be some features are available some are not you know so in the let's go to data set again let's uh, if we remove this file again let's see if there is any other one that we missed for the folder go back here and now we are gonna go to the new we done item child uh, child items exist item name last modified so it's the same thing for the folder as well so it shows you you know last modified date for that uh, container but uh, for the sql table you are gonna have uh, some properties so you will experiment you will see they are not gonna be like the most complex uh, as i told you this is the container last modified okay so as uh, per document if you are in the relational databases these are the items you're going to have structure column count and exist you can check these and this is going to return you that all right so thank you very much for watching i hope uh, this video is helpful and uh, now you will uh, watch some other videos uh, where i have used the get metadata activity and uh, that will help you to understand different scenarios and uh, learn about the get metadata activity thanks very much for watching please subscribe my channel if you guys like my effort and i will see you guys in the next video